the book of Revelation, the central theme of the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the Lamb. He's called 27 times in one book, the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ is what the book is called. The book of Revelation is not the uncovering. The word revelation means uncovering. It's not the uncovering of the Antichrist. It's not the uncovering of the end times. It's not the uncovering of prophecy. Certainly those things are in there, but we shouldn't make that the central theme of that book. It's not the uncovering of 666. The book of Revelation, if it is anything, is the revelation or the uncovering of Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God. 27 times in the book of Revelation, the Bible calls Jesus the Lamb of God. He's the slain lamb. He's the worship lamb in the book of Revelation. These are all biblical phrases in the book of Revelation. He's the worthy lamb. He's the lamb on the throne. He's the lamb that breaks the seals and opens the book. He's the lamb at the center of the throne. It's the wrath of the lamb. It's the salvation of the lamb. It's the multitude standing before the lamb. It talks about the horns of the lamb, the war of the lamb, the song of the lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb. It talks about the 12 apostles of the Lamb. It talks about the Lamb's book of life and people's names and family names that are written in the Lamb's book of life. You can do with a Without a lot of things, you can do without the fowl of the air, the beast of the field, or the fish in the sea. But one thing you can't do without in your home is you need a lamb in your home. That's why the Bible said in Exodus 12 concerning the Passover, let every house have a lamb for that house. You've got to have the lamb for your house. And so in the story that Nathan begins to tell David, he says the rich man had exceeding flocks of lambs, but the poor man, listen carefully, did not have all the things the rich man had. But notice what it said in verse 3, that he had one lamb and he, number one, nurtured it. The word nurtured means to feed something until it grows. Just as a mother nurtures her newborn baby, it's the lamb that was nurtured in their home. It didn't live out in the backyard. It didn't live out in a barn. It lived in their home. The Bible's very clear about that. And they were feeding the lamb and the lamb was growing in their home and in their family. Their family grew up with the lamb. The children were familiar with the lamb. The lamb was a part of their family. The Bible said that he ate at their table. He ate at their table, the lamb. It was, it, it was not a pet. It was not... Uh, an animal that they had a distant relationship with that was, that was not really bonded and connected. He didn't stay out in the barn, in the backyard, out in the field somewhere. But the Bible said that the lamb, it, 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 it was not a, a petting zoo lamb. See, that's kind of how we want to treat Jesus is we just want to go to church. And we want to have a petting zoo and pet the lamb and then leave after church is over, and go do our thing. But this was not the relationship. This was the relationship of the lamb in the home. And the Bible said he ate at their table. <laughs> he ate at their table. It's not like they had the lamb's little bowl over there and, and he would eat in the corner like a dog or something. But he would, the lamb would be at their table. It's a beautiful picture of communion. It's a beautiful picture of the cup. Jesus said, this is my cup and this is my body, the bread. And the lamb, they're, they're having communion, common union. And it's not like he's just a pet in a petting zoo that they see once a week, but he's living in the home. The lamb is. 